All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hal Sherliff. I am the director and co-founder of Camp Constitution, and we're giving a little presentation on the Samuel Blumenfeld Archive. And before I do, I want to talk a little bit about Camp Constitution, but how many in this room knew Sam Blumenfeld personally? Other than Reverend Steve, because uh, a number of people come by our table and actually knew him. He died in 2015. Uh, there was a lady from Kenya that came by our table, and she said, I saw his video somewhere on YouTube, and that's what motivated me to homeschool. And so uh, I was, uh, we were dear friends of uh, Sam, who passed away in 2015 on June 1st. He was a regular at this homeschool convention. Uh, I inherited his papers, his library, a lot of his papers and his recordings, and even some of his artifacts, like his credentials from homeschool shows in the 90s, and I have some of his early homeschool shows. I guess they used to meet at a Baptist church in the basement when Mass Hope first started out, so it's grown quite a bit, and it's a great thing that it has. So Camp Constitution is a, not, is a charitable trust based in New Hampshire. I'm originally from Boston, lived there all my life, and I'm a homeschool dad. My youngest, or I should say our youngest, will be done in about two weeks, Liberty Online, and then she'll be going to Liberty University in, uh, in, in, the, in the August, or early, yeah, mid-August. And one of my gals graduates from Liberty School of Nursing in a couple of weeks. I just got a text from her. She said, I just finished my last college class ever, you know. <laughs> and she was not the best homeschool student. But when she was a junior, from, well, some, from sophomore to junior, she said, I want to be a nurse. Now you know what you have to do. And she got really serious about it. And we hired a tutor that we met here at a homeschool show. She was a real godsend. And uh, she did very well in her SATs. I think they call them something else now. And Liberty School of Nursing took her the very first year, which they don't usually do. And uh, all my children went through, uh, and all of my children used this wonderful Alpha Phonics. This is one of Sam's most, I think his most important work, which is some of the simplest, and we have these available at our table. And when I show these to people, I'll say, what's, what's missing? Or what do you think might be missing in here? And I'll flash through it very quickly. And some people say, pictures. I said, yes, pictures. Sam used to say that you do not need puppets popping out of trash cans to teach people how to read. In fact, pictures were a distraction. So, anyway, uh, we, uh, again, uh, we were founded back in 2009, and we held our very first family camp. We started off very humbly. We just had a, a week-long camp, and then God added things to our, our ministry. But we started a week-long family camp. I think we had maybe 60 people there. We now are double our size, and we actually had turned people away from last year's camp. Not that we wanted to, we just had no more room. And this year's camp is uh, coming up July 17th to the 22nd at the Sydney Hills Christian Camp and Conference Center in Plainfield, New Hampshire, which is about maybe two, two and a half hour drive from here, a beautiful venue. And uh, we, the rooms are, we usually have some dormitories, and if we have families, they have their own room, plenty of privacy. And we have a full schedule in between teaching these great principles of our history. Reverend Kraft specializes in America's godly heritage. I teach on the Constitution. We have a few constitutional scholars that come in. Uh, Pastor David Whitney of the Institute on the Constitution out of Maryland. We have one of the world's top atmospheric scientists, uh, Will, Professor Willie Soon. He started coming in 15, and we would offer him an honorarium. He said, I'm having too much fun. And now, he's, now he supports us financially. He brings his whole family. His, even his mother law comes. Uh, and Professor Soon goes into refuting the climate change. The world won't come to an end. It may come to an end in 10 to 15 years, but it's not going to be. It might be more divine intervention than it would be uh, AOC's climate change. <laughs> and he does it with a sense of humor, too. So he really, really does a great presentation. And then we have other uh, different topics. We also have a program for the youngsters that his wife, Mrs. Kraft, who's here at the table, her first homeschool show, so give her a pat on the back. First time she's <laughs> ever been to a homeschool show. And she's a retired school teacher, and she does a phenomenal job with the little ones from age four to 11. We actually have two groups at that age. Um, you'll see them dressing up little colonial outfits and uh, with the little muskets, not real ones, although we do some marksmanship, but, uh, and, um, and they learn about our great history in a fun, Although I think teaching is fun, learning is fun, isn't it? If you're not learning something, I don't care what age you are. So it should be fun, it should be exciting to learn new things. 
we just started a weekend camp in, in uh, late September, so Friday to October 2nd, in Camp Sentinel in Tuftonboro, which in New Hampshire, which is two towns north of me. And that's the best time of year if you'd like to see the leaves change. And we only charge $150 per person, five meals, two nights lodging. And we should be taking a field trip to the World War II Museum in Wolfboro. At our fa family camp, we charge $300 for the whole week for 14 and over. Uh, if you register with it by May 1st, you save $50. And then uh, 13 and under, it's 200 or 150 you register before May 1st. So we plan to fill up again this year. We also, uh, as a nonprofit uh, charitable trust, we have tuition assistance available. And we just had, we did have, a have to turn a family away because we had no space. But up until that time, we never turned a family away for lack of funding. And we also started a ladies' retreat about three years ago, and this is Mrs. Kraft here. This was, I think, at a fall event, and this one's coming up this week, next weekend. And uh, ladies have a great time. There's some fellowship, they do some devotions, uh, some shooting too, which will, if you like, it's again, it's an optional thing. And, uh, it's, and they do a craft. My wife's an incredibly gifted crafter, so they do a craft. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Lear, Garrett Lear, was known as the Patriot Pastor. Uh, he since passed away. He's six foot seven in his stocking feet, and he would always wear the colonial black robe regiment with his musket. And one year we raised the Gadsden flag in Boston City Hall Plaza. He shows up with his firing musket walking around, and someone said, Is that real? He said, Of course it's real. They're going to be carrying on a big toy gun, are you? So anyway, we had a lot of fun, and she's carrying on his tradition as best, as best they can. And of course, this is our Blumenfeld archive, which we'll be talking about. We participate in parades. We actually have real cannons that we, uh, we, we are in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Boston. It was the biggest parade I've ever participated in, and it was a great time. But we're also, we also want to do community outreach. And where I live in Alton, New Hampshire, we sponsor two miles of highway. I say it's a two, two miles of the cleanest road in, uh, in the state. And so, again, it's something that we care about. We care about community. And our Blumenfeld Archive, uh, goes around the world. It's on the internet. So it's not just local people, people from the United States. And uh, in t 2019, a lady from South Africa, which Reverend Kraft has since met, uh, a member, of, she's a Boer, B-O-E-R. Yeah. A very interesting lady, but she's uh, ethnically a Boer. And she taught at a school in uh, Johannesburg. She inherited a class of 19 students that were special needs. They didn't have a different term for that. And she said there was no progress in two years of reading whatsoever. She found, she prayed, and she found the Blumenfeld archives, and mm -hmm. she said, I, this is probably not what it's cracked up to be. She said, in two weeks, 17 of the 19 became proficient readers. And she got a hold of me, and they met in Cape Town, and she did a testimonial. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this uh, past, last year, a gentleman that runs a, a school in Harare, Zimbabwe, which is not exactly uh, noted for its limited government freedom, Christian-based school that he's had, and he found the alpha phonics, he had the same problem. He said we had a program, but it wasn't working very well. He found alpha phonics online. He <coughs> sent me an email, and he said, can you donate some of these? Now, you look at that classroom, it's bare bones, but the children are all well-dressed and all because they were wearing a mask. That was back during the height of the lockdown. And English is their first language in Zimbabwe. So we mailed out two different batches, and I said, uh, I said you can do this with, have unlimited rights to all this. So we don't ration bullets in time of war, whether they're real bullets, educational bullets. And I said, but I wouldn't mind a few pictures. And I had a couple of videos of, of the teachers teaching this wonderful alpha phonics. And you see these beautiful children. And uh, we were hoping to bring uh, the, the head of the school. His first name is God Knows, mm -hmm. which is a common name in, uh, in uh, that part of, the, uh, part of the world. So he does have a passport. So maybe one day we'll get, maybe next year we'll get him to the homeschool mm -hmm. show to be a testimony. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that Sam would do is that he would write to uh, mayors of cities like Newark. And he'd say, give me the worst school you have. And I would turn it around in one year. I won't charge you a cent. And by the way, he was a friend of Marva Collins mm -hmm. of the West Side Prep, Prep, Prep School in Chicago. Maybe there was a movie. Uh, Cicely Tyson and Morgan Freeman. He plays all the good world, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, and she, she was a public school teacher. She started her own private school and she took some of the difficult students and she turned them into great learners and, and readers and successful. So, um, also we have a publishing arm and uh, we just put this back in print after, I don't know, about 
40 or 50 years, John Stark, who was the live free or die general. And we put a lot of other things. This one, the 1928 Army Manual. And we have some other items here. This is something that we put in print for the first time, written by Sam Blumenfeld. It was a, it was a version on his, on his computer. And it was called School Induced Dyslexia. He was of the opinion, and I don't disagree, that dyslexia is artificial, with few exceptions, it's artificially created and most likely in the classrooms. And what's the solution? Instead of intensive phonics, and he used to talk about uh, the old schools. Used to uh, the school I went to, we had the chairs were bolted to the to the floor. Some of you might remember that, right? Mm -hmm. There was the alphabet, picture of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and American flag, and that was it, right? There was no distractions. You didn't have things hanging from the ceiling, and you then they took the bolts out, and you had little circle learning, and people were on the floor, and there was distractions. And on top of that, you learned a, 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 the look say method of reading, so you couldn't read very well, so no wonder. And what, what's the solution to all this, according to the government officials? Drug them down. Give them Ritalin. Give them uh, some psychotropic drug. But Sam believed, again, it was artificially created. And he also did a series of newsletters, which we have in, on the archive in PDF format. But recently, a friend of ours who was an instructor, She's a doctor of education, and she's co-authoring a book about the Wayne Williams murders. You remember back in the 80s, uh, the Atlanta murders? And she said she wanted to reprint Sam's essay entitled Eugenics in America, Education and the Making of a Black Underclass. And I thought, you know what, I think we should put this in hard copy. We have these at a table. Rev wrote the foreword to it. And it's not a very long one, but it goes into the history of the IQ test uh, and the history of eugenics. Because Planned Parenthood was very much involved in that. That's another topic for, for another time. But um, the, uh, Sam mentioned that one of the IQ tests to prove that certain races were inferior was a re conditioned reflex test. And they got Amer white Americans, some black Americans, and they got Indian Americans. And they said, well, the Indians tend to react faster, the blacks second, the whites third. So that proves that if you react the stimulus faster, you kind of know. That's how ridiculous and evil this whole scientific racism is. So this is a good little essay that is important. And again, we have them at a table. We are also involved in a lawsuit that the U.S. Supreme Court heard in January, and we believe that we're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. and what happened with this was that I simply, we wanted to host an event, City Hall Plaza in Boston, where they have a public access flight. That's what I call it. And we raised the Gadsden flag about eight years ago to celebrate uh, an event. And we want to fly the Christian flag uh, to commemorate Boston's rich Christian history. And it has a really rich Christian history. You wouldn't know it today, but it has a rich, from the city set on the hill, and, uh, and all the missionaries that came out of the Park Street Church all over the world, just some great Christian history. And even the monuments around Boston. And the city flag has a Bible verse. Well, did you know that? The city of Boston's flag, it's in Latin, so most people don't know it, but it comes from, I think, First Kings. And so they denied it based on the First Amendment. And I thought, you know, we're camp constitution. We can't let this go. I asked a lady who was very nice, and she was sympathetic, the lady who was supposed to get us the permit. She said, I know this isn't over. And I said, I want an official reason, you know, in a letter or an email. And the guy in charge sent me an email. He said, separation of church and state. I said, I think we have a case here. And Liberty Council picked up the picked up case up within a short time. And we lost at the low level, of course. And it, it's been, what, five or six years now? We finally got a hearing at the Supreme Court. And we think we will, and it's not just about a, a success with this case. It's going to set a precedent. Mm -hmm. There are a lot mm -hmm. of people who think, gee, you can't rent out that facility if you're the local ladies' Bible group, if this is a library. You can't use it. It's a separation of church and state. They have no concept of that. And during the, uh, we weren't allowed into the oral argument, just the attorneys. But we heard, we heard one of the justices, Gorsuch, said, so-called separation of church and state. The left didn't like, oh, what do you mean, so-called? And Sonia Meyer, she, um, the, 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 Gorsuch wouldn't wear his mask, and she was sitting next to him, so she wouldn't sit, so, she's, so when you see an illustration of it, that chair is missing. <laughs> it's pretty funny stuff. So, and Clarence Thomas, of course, made some comments. He said, the city's attorney said, um, I get, it looks like it's selective inclusivity, isn't it? Something to that effect. Yeah, so the title of the name of the case is Shirtliff v. City of Boston. It wasn't my decision. I wouldn't have used my last name. But that's just, uh, we had a prayer vigil 
the night before, this was the day of the event, and it was a little cold, huh, Rev? Oh, it was, it was the <laughs> hawk was kicking. <laughs> the hawk was biting. As the you hawk was biting. <laughs> but it was all to God's, God's glory. With yeah. The people, it was a great time. It was a, in a small world department. This gentleman right here is an attorney for uh, Liberty Council, but when he was a little boy, he lived two doors down from us, and I didn't. Who, who knew that he'd be this uh, this hotshot attorney, Christian attorney, and he. You see him pictured with Donald Trump and all the other people. He's a really great, he's got an incredible voice. He's one of our instructors, too, at camp. And he's going to give a class, actually, this year on eugenics, you know, and the, the races behind abortions, uh, uh, races behind abortions. And here they fly the communist flag at City Hall Plaza. And it, it's like it's made the news around the world. A public flag, a Christian flag, and the First Amendment. So I'm going to get now, I'm going to go into the, I was going to just do a PowerPoint, but I'm just going to go right to the website and show you the Sam Blumenfeld archive. It's a lot easier to do that than it would be to, uh, to put a little PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, this is housed on our website. And when, I, when he passed away, he asked us to take his, before he actually passed, there were like 200 boxes of materials, uh, CDs, even some reel-to-reels, and a lot, of, um, a lot of his hard copy, his notes, his books. And we have two incredibly talented people in our, uh, in our, uh, our camp newspaper editor, Mark Affleck. We do have a camp newspaper during camp. And he loves to PDF things. And he loves to take audio, all, audio and, and put it in MP3 and MP4. And our, camp, our, our webmaster, Eric Conover. And they built this. I was just hoping to get some PDFs on some, like, script. I never expected this. And last year we got about two million views. Again, that's, two doesn't mean two million people. One person could look at a hundred things or two hundred things, but it means a lot of people looking at it. And it's all free, all free. Some people donate to it, but that's that's good. So, uh, the first is a little bit about Sam, and uh, he was an incredible man. He was on a little diminutive side, but he was a giant in many ways. Mm -hmm. To look at him, you would think that he was a field artilleryman in World War II. He went overseas in March, but he was from, his parents were Polish Jews, immigrated here. Uh, his mother never learned how to read in Polish or English. He went to the, uh, Co he went at Coney Island, but um, Bronx schools where he learned, and he said that he learned the 23rd Psalm. Every morning they would pray. The principal had the PA system, and he said when he was in, when he was in Italy during the war, he said that 23rd Psalm always gave him assurance. He did catch, he was in a little bit of combat towards the end of the war. And, uh, and he, so there's a picture of him here, uh, that's his World War II picture, and it was, it was his days at Prentice Hall, uh, he was um, Grosset Dunlop, so in the uh, late 50s to early 60s, he was the editor of Grosset Dunlop, the Hardy Boy, Nancy Drew Mysteries, mm -hmm. and he actually, when the boss was away, he published a book uh, exposing socialism that he wasn't supposed to do, and they fired him over it. <laughs> but uh, that's when Sam learned about the reading problem. There was a friend of his, uh, he was an attorney from New York City, Washburn, Watson Washburn. He said, Sam, I'm, found, I'm starting a reading reform group. I want you to be involved. He said, reading reform? What are you talking about? All you have to do is learn the vowels, the consonants, put them together. What's the big deal? He said, you need to read a book entitled, Why Johnny Can't Read, by mm -hmm. Rudolf Fleisch. Some of you heard, that, heard of that book? Mm -hmm. Now, Fleisch was actually a socialist from Vienna that fled the Nazis in the 30s. He was an honorable guy, by the way. There's a few honorable people. Let's see. He, didn't, he believed in high literacy. Socialists today don't like high literacy because it makes citizens too That's smart. Right. You start mm -hmm. questioning the government. If you yeah. hide, if you, uh, it's interesting, too, that John Dewey, that Sam learned so much about, went to Russia under Stalin's regime, and he had a lot of Russian uh, supporters of his, and Stalin said, get this out of my country. He put all his disciples in Siberia. We can't do that, folks, around here. That's not what we huh. It'd be against the Constitution. And he told, he said, that's okay to corrupt capitalist countries, but we want nothing to do with it here. Mm -hmm. So John Dewey came back. And Dewey, by the way, was, again, bankrolled by the Rockefellers, of course. They bankrolled a lot of evil things. So uh, Sam read the book, and he learned that he was one of the first ones to say that there was a deliberately dumbing down of America. Mm -hmm. And back in the 60s, people didn't want to hear that. You know, there wasn't a large audience for that. And uh, they said, oh, no, that, it, it's just mistakes. People make mistakes. 
So he did, his background information is a, was far more than, than, uh, than Fleiss ever did. Sam went back to the 1700s, to the 1800s, to Horace Mann, we're all familiar with Horace Mann, the so-called father of public education. Well, they don't know that Mann went to Prussia in the 1840s and late 1830s, where they had state schools. Now, when you have a state school, what worldview do you teach at that state school? The worldview of the state, which makes sense, right? If I'm a Baptist and I want to start a school, it's probably going to reflect the Baptist better. If I'm a Catholic, I probably want to have a parochial school. If I'm a Pentecostal, it might be Pentecostal. It might be a little bit of theology mixed in, but that's what you do. If you're a statist, you promote the state's worldview. Mm -hmm. And what does the state worldview today? Well, we know what. That's why we home. That's why you're homeschooling. Are we all homeschoolers? Are there any new homeschoolers? Are you new because of uh, what you saw when your children were doing the so-called remote learning? <laughs> yeah. I'm a teacher. Oh, you're oh, you're a teacher. Well, you know what's interesting. Yeah, I have a three-year-old. Well, now it's interesting. She's not going there. When, when I lived in Boston, we had we had to have new uh, we had to have new pipes put in. Uh, they were putting new pipes in the streets, and one of the guys that worked for the water company was drinking from a faucet, and he said, "This is bad stuff, but I'm really thirsty." So I see the guys in the water company know the water's bad. The teachers know that the teaching is bad, right? It's it's absolutely amazing. So. Uh, so here we have a lot of stuff about Sam and his, uh, and he, Sam knew a lot of people, influenced a lot, he knew some world leaders, he knew Ayn Rand, not that I was a fan, in fact, he told me that when he met Ayn Rand, she was the one Atlas Shrugged, she, he said she was a militant atheist, at that time in his life he said, I was a sad atheist, <laughs> he later became a, a born again Christian, but uh, in fact what led him to the Christ was that he was doing a book on the history of education in the United States. It led him to the New England Calvinists. It led him to the, the, the little reader, you know, those little readers, you know, and Adam's fall, man sinned all, and all that stuff. And that led him to Christianity. So it's a, in fact, we have an essay of his, Why I Became a Christian. It was never published before. It's published on our website. Mm -hmm. And so, but let's get into his, uh, the tutoring aspect of it. Here we have, in his books, uh, Alpha Phonics. Now, this is, here we go. This is this online. So we have this, not only do we have this book online, but we have all 128 reading lessons in audio and video. A friend of mine, Bill McNally, who's, that started the Samuel Blumenfeld Foundation, which now I'm president, uh, he sat down with Sam in a studio in Windham, New Hampshire, and he went over every single lesson. So we have audio and video. And you know what? If, it goes by pretty quickly. It's not something, it's 120, that sounds like a lot, but you can do five or six lessons in one sitting. And on the, at the very back is the cursive alphabet, right? Yeah, that's not even taught today. That's, I don't know, they consider imperialism to teach people how to read properly. I'm being a little facetious, but you know, it's, they, don't, they, they don't teach it all. So, um, he also, uh, so you have the instructions. And with the instruction, we also have the manual. Some lady came by, and maybe someone in this room said, is there, a is there an instruction manual? And we never needed the manual, but there is one, and you can download it. We never used it. We didn't think we needed to, but some people like to have it as a guideline. Maybe how many lessons should I do a day, what have you. And, you know, it's just so basic. You learn some of the vowel sounds, and then some of the short letters, some of the short words. Hal, uh, yeah, that's me. Sal, Sam, Cab. And before you know it, now, one of my daughters, I had trouble with her. I was so frustrated. It get frustrated, really get frustrated. Mm. I, was, I, I wasn't in tears, but if I was close to it, she would pronounce every letter. You know, she would say, S -ah -mm. you know, ba -a -a -t. <laughs> you gotta, I said, Sam, help. <laughs> he said, Hal, she's going to get it. And she did. It took a little, you know. <laughs> I, did, I used to have brownish blonde hair, believe it or not, before I had children. <laughs> Some of it's due to old age, of course, but, and, and also, he also was an advocate of cursive first. Some of you might have already, probably already went beyond that. And this is a, uh, when you see a toddler, you give them a crayon, what do they do with that? Do they do little blocks? They scribble. So you harness the scribble into nice penmanship. Now, my penmanship is terrible. I have to work at it. It's legible most of the time. In public school I went to, which, you know, back then it wasn't the worst place in the world, they taught block first, 
and then they did the cursive. And it should be the other way around. In fact, he was really adamant. He said, you probably don't even need to teach block. Let them learn cursive. They can figure the block out. So uh, he ha he has a le we have a lesson on cursive in this as well. And also basic arithmetic. Not mathematics, not new math, not uh, common core math, but basic math. You know, the uh, Jethro Bodine was here. The Gazintas and the additions and the subtractions. Gazinta, you know, three goes into six, two yes. times. Yeah, Gazintas, right? Um, and again, these are all... Uh, and some of his, I think his, one of his most important books was this one, the NEA, Trojan Horse in American Education. He goes to the history of this group from the 1880s. It's one of the largest unions. Mm -hmm. It's what they are. It's a labor union. Yep. And the interest of the child is not primary. It never was. Well, it may have been 100 plus years ago, but it's long since that. And Sam would go, uh, he, would, he would get all of their writings. You know, so he was up on what they were doing. It wasn't something he, you know, he wrote a book and then he, but he, he, he never thought he was having much of an impact. I said, Sam, you've influenced three generations. And on his deathbed, I said to him, it was a Thursday when he died, he died the following Monday. I said, Sam, you're gonna, our, our pledge to you is that your work is gonna influence generations yet unborn. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, please share this with people. And then we have um, another book, okay, um, The Victims of Dick and Jane. Um, you remember when they canceled uh, a few of books of um, Dr. Seuss? Well, he, one of his newsletters, he exposed Dr. Seuss. He is no fan of Seuss. Uh, Theodore Gersel, Getzel, first off, he was not a, he, he was pretty much anti-American. He, he was a leftist, an internationalist. He hated conservative Christians and did, not that I think he should be canceled, um, his, but his books, he would write a book with 50 words. And he lamented, he said, it's so hard to write a book with 50 words. It's struggle. I mean, how many people, how many people go around saying, you know, Green, Sam and Greenham and all, and his Dick and Jane books? That was another example. Now, I had the Dick and Jane, mm -hmm. and this, my second grade, I was a terrible reader, because it was look say, it was the Dick and Jane reader, and the teacher said to my mom, teach him at home. Well, my mother was born in 1920. All she knew was phonics. Mm -hmm. So I learned phonics, and within a short time, I became a pretty good reader, where the point was all the bookstores and downtown Boston, when I was in junior high, I was a big World War II buff. They knew little Hal's coming to get some World War II books here, you know. I, uh, I had a love of reading because I learned how to read properly. Mm -hmm. And I was telling somebody, I was filling prescriptions when I was 10 years old. At one time I did it when my dad was downstairs and my customer came in the drugstore. I wasn't supposed to do that. But I, uh, I had a great love of reading. Then he had uh, the whole language OBE fraud. Uh, that's, OBE was outcome-based education. That was before Common Core. That was the precursor to Common Core. And his last book was called Crimes of the Educators. He co-authored that. That came out in 2013 or 14. And he co-authored that with a man named Alex Newman. Alex <laughs> Newman is sort of uh, passed the baton over to Sam. Alex is one of our instructors. He comes all the way from Florida with his family. And he's got a show on... Um, on Frank's speech at 4 p.m., the, the, uh, the uh, Sentinel, it's called, every 4 p.m., Monday through Fridays. And this is, this is a manuscript that we have, a downloaded manuscript. And they make the case that what's going on in government schools is a crime. Mm -hmm. It's a crime, uh, on many cases. One of them is destroying their, they're destroying their innocence. Mm -hmm. and in fact, he points out to 1983, there was a report from the Commission on Excellence in Education and they determined that if a foreign power did to our schools what was being done by us, it would be considered an act of war. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that you can find that online too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so th these guys mean business, and they look at the long haul. What they were planning back in the 1840s and 50s, they were looking to you know for the next hundred to impact next hundred years. And uh, John Dewey, Sam does a lot of work exposing him. He said that we he was a humanist. And we know a humanist basically is you deify man, the, the worship of man. He was a member of the Humanist Society, and he was a signer of the Humanist Manifesto I, along with a lot of other people. And he said that as humanists, that we use the classroom as a minister uses the pulpit. So much for no agenda. So much for, you know, in local parentis. Remember that term? In place of the parent? You know, in our camp, we respect that. Now, we have a lot of families. But we, you know, you come a certain way, you're gonna, if you come a Baptist, you leave a Baptist, but a better one. You come as a Catholic, you leave as a better one. And that, that's our flaw. We don't, we don't try to change uh, 
their worldview. We try to give them more information and make them uh, better at that, but uh, better patriot activists, Christian activists, but we're not there trying to say, well, you think, you think uh, that we, we're, we evolved. Well, no, we didn't evolve. We're not going to, you think, you blame creation. But, oh, no, but you really evolved. No, we don't teach that. You see, we, uh, we teach the creation, but we don't try to change people's views. And that's, uh, that's what they do at these government schools. Uh, he also wrote The New Illiterates, and I know this is sort of an aside, but he believed that Christopher Marlowe uh, was the true author of the Shakespeare's works. And he wrote, I mean, I'm neutral on the subject, but it's a fascinating read, though. We have this, to buy this book on Amazon, it's like three or four hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, but you want to download it, and it would make a great movie, too. And Sam read every single Shakespeare uh, play, and I said, Sam, why did you spend so much time? He said, next to the King James Bible, this is the best English literature in the world. And mm -hmm. I think it's true authors should be known. I'm not going to argue with the guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we have a lot of his book proposals there. And I would say, more importantly, we have about two weeks' worth of audios of his speeches. We even have a few at this homeschool show back in the 90s. And I tell you, if you're a homeschooling parent, and I'm sure every so often you think, oh my goodness, this is too much. Am I doing the right thing? Listen to one of Sam's audios. Then you say, what was I ever thinking? Why would I even, because that's what I used to do back in the 90s. You know, I'm like, oh my God, this is really tough. You know, my poor wife, put it in your hands for now. And, and it's, listen to one of Sam's presentations. I said, what was I thinking? You know, mm -hmm. of course it's the right thing to do. You know, that, maybe we need to change a little bit what we're doing, but it's the right thing to do. So there's just so many topics. And he was a guest on a lot of radio shows. And so I get and some of this we converted to video on our YouTube channel and our Vimeo, um, on our, our Rumble page too. But it's just an incredible amount of work, and also some videos. Now, there's newsletters. Uh, I mentioned the newsletters. Uh, some of these are timeless newsletters. Some of them is great information. And again, you have unlimited rights to download it. You can put it up on your own website. You can do it, and you don't you get, just give us. Say it came from Camp Constitution. That's all we're looking for. Like the lady in South Africa. She wants us to have a chain of learning centers around South Africa. And she said, do you have to, do you, can you give us permission? I said, of course. Just, you know, make sure they know the source. That's all. That's all that matters. I was uh, looking at some, uh, <clears throat> every so often I'll go to the site to see who's downloading, and we get uh, updates every quarter. And somebody from the kingdom of Bhutan downloaded our Alpha Phonics. I said, where is Bhutan? Found out it was in China, north of China. So members of the royal family of Bhutan are teaching their children to read properly, where most of us in our government schools are teaching this miserable work say method, where they're becoming basically functionally literate. And by the way, this is also used for adults. You know, some maybe even some of you, maybe if uh, maybe you you dyslexic. Well, Sam would have dys Sam even taught Down Down syndrome children and adults. So what he would do is he said. Start from the basics, you know, learn the vowel signs. Most adults catch on pretty quick. He also had an inner city um, in Roxbury. There was a group called um, The Weight House. We are all in this together. And he would go there and he would teach mostly late 20s, early 30s. People had, know how, they would finish their high school and they were functionally illiterate. So he would teach them how to read and then they have computer skills and other skills. So uh, he, was quite, he was quite a man. And uh, we also have some of his videos. Not as many, but you can also go to our uh, website and find a lot of the uh, links to his videos. And Sam was, uh, this isn't so much about homeschooling, but uh, <coughs> Algeria back in the 60s when it was under communist attack and had a large Jewish population. Sam became a member, he started a group called Friends of Algeria, got to know a lot of those folks. He also started a group called Friends of Gatanga. Gatanga was a province in what used to be called the Belgian Congo, now Zaire. And there was a uh, pro-Christian leader, Mose Chombay, and Sam became his friend, interviewed him. He interviewed him in French in, in Madrid, Spain, when he was in exile. And Sam used the term conspiracy to describe what was happening. And Chombay said, Ma oui, la force occult. So, and all that's available probably uh, for the first time anywhere, uh, the newsletters and the various other. And he was also the founder of the Jewish Society of Americanists. <clears throat> And there's also lots of letters that you have, it's correspondence with uh, some leaders. I think there's some from the White House, from Ronald Reagan, and many others. And so, 
So I do, we do want to uh, suggest that if you're homeschool, all you need to do is log into our website, campconstitution.net, and when you, log, when you click on the, uh, the archive, all we look for is a username and an email, and you have unlimited access to some of the great resources as a homeschooler, educator, historian that you can find. So, if there any questions? Good. So, you all are going to go to our table and get a copy of Alpha Phonics and some of this other material? Yeah, great. So, all right, we're all set. Yeah. All right, well, thank you.